What an amazing view. We are on the uh, Arbel Cliff, 180 meter above sea level and almost 400 meter above the Sea of Galilee. Now, north of us is Mount uh, Nitai. Mount Nitai is named after a famous individual from ancient Arbel and his name is Nitai of Arbel who lived in the uh, second century BC. He was the uh, preceding judge or another description would be vice president of the Sanhedrin. Now this was probably during the reign of John Horkinus, the Hasmonean. From historical perspective, it's important to note that the name Nitai has been given to the mountain only in uh, recent time. In the Second Temple period and Roman periods, the name Arbel was probably used for the two sides of the creek. Mount Arbel and Mount Nitai have hundreds of natural caves which have been transformed to enable men to use them for residence, especially in times of need. Three significant battles took place here. The first two battles occurred during the period when the Hasmoneans, a Jewish dynasty, ruled the country. In the first book of Hasmoneans, chapter 9, it tells about Demetrius Soter, who was king of the Seleucid Empire in Syria between 162 BC and 150 BC. Demetrius sent Bachides, who was a Seleucid general, to Judea to suppress the Hasmonean revolt. Bachides, on his way from Syria to Judea, passes here in Arbel, conquers the place and kills many of its population. The governing pendulum continues and Judah Aristobulus of the Hasmoneans take control of Galilee in 103-104 BC. As for the uh, other two significant battles here in our bell, we will discuss them along the track. There are more than 120 caves located in several levels. They were hewn or prepared for the local to reside in. In some caves, there are two to three rooms. Typical height is two meters. You can see that next to each group of caves, and we'll see it later on, there is a rock pillar that makes it difficult to access them. In different places, passages were found between caves that are on different height levels, with the help of hoon caverns or using ladders that were placed internally and were hard for outsiders to see. The cave's complex was organized as a living unit with functional rooms that were probably intended for cooking, sleeping, storage and so on. Many of them have been hit over the years by severe landslides. In addition to the caves, there were several dozens plastered caves, most of them for storing water and a few with ritual purification bath in Hebrew called mikveh. Now, down below the caves, there were many scattered pieces of ceramic from the Roman period to the Byzantine period. At least based on the ceramic, it does not appear that a settlement existed here beyond the Byzantine period. So I mentioned three significant battles that took place here. The first one described was between Bachides, a Seleucid general, and the Hasmoneans in 161 BC. The second war occurred 120 years later between Herod, who was appointed in 40 BC by the Romans to rule Judea, and Matthias Antigonus II, who served at the time as the Hasmonean king of Judea. Herod begins his battle with Antigonus and his Jewish supporters here in Arbel in the winter of 38-39 BC. 
The opposition to Herod was severe, and Herod made a great effort in the battle against the uh, Jews loyal to Antigonus, who hid in the caves, uh, just as you can see above us, and were cruelly killed by Herod's soldiers. The killing method involved lowering soldiers in cabinets tied with ropes to the height of the cave opening, and then using long poles with hooks. The hooks were used to drag the locals out of the caves and throw them into the abysses. Many of the rebels decided to commit suicide rather than surrendering to Herod's soldier. As soon as Herod left the Galilee on his way to Samaria, the revolt in the Galilee flared up again and he was forced to return to suppress it once more. This repeated itself for the third time when Herod is just before the Sage of Jerusalem. This time he receives massive help from the Roman army and he quickly conquered the Galilee for the third time. Herod then, with the help of Gaius Sosius, fought over Jerusalem and after three months of bitter battle, he conquered the city. Antigonus was captured and executed by beheading. It is important to note that Mathesius Antigonus, the last Hasmonean king, was from a Roman point of view, a very difficult enemy. And in fact, until the revolt of Bar Kokhva, 200 years later, there was no dominant leader like him who stood for such a long time against the Romans. We discussed two battles and are left with a third. The Jewish army commander of the Galilee and the Golan Heights during the Great Revolt 2000 years ago was Yosef ben Matityahu. He estimated at the beginning of the preparation for the uh, Great Revolt in 66 AD that the Romans would begin to suppress the revolt here in Galilee. So he fortified 17 of the dozens of Jewish locations from Lower Galilee to the Golan. His concept was defense, meaning concentrating the army forces supporting the revolt within the fortified location, defend them to detain the Romans and gain as much time as possible. This is probably in anticipation of some event that will stop the Romans. What can this event be? So it can be help from heaven, similar to the salvation of Jerusalem in Sancherib, in Hebrew Sancheriv, journey in 701 BC, when 185,000 Assyrian soldiers died overnight before attacking Jerusalem. The event left great impression on the minds of the people. Another option is wait for a foreign invention, such as assistance from the Parthian Empire. Vespasian, a future Roman emperor, he conducted the battle on the Roman side. He also brought his son, Titus, a Roman general, to assist. Vespasian arrived in Acre, which served as an important center for the Roman army, where he organized his army towards his battle with the Jews across the country. So as part of the preparation done across the Galilee and the Golan regions towards the Great Revolt, and the Roman invasion in 66 AD, there are opinion that the Arbel Caves were also part of the fortification that Yosef ben Matetiao completed and are called the caves around Ganisar Sea or the village of the Arbel Caves. Yet some scholars claim that according to the wall and remains on Mount Litai just across the valley and above us, the fortification was actually done on Mount Nittai. And I invite you to watch the dedicated video on Mount Nittai, 
which will provide you a more holistic view of the preparation towards the Great Revolt. To conclude our visit here, I will remind you that two ancient Jewish villages were exposed close to our location. In both Arbel and Wadi Hammam, synagogues with an impressive appearance were found. Considering the uh, similar history of the two locations, it can be assumed that the population of these two villages was the one that prepared the natural caves as shelter, both those here in uh, our bell caves and the one just across us uh, in the uh, Nitai uh, cliffs. As I mentioned earlier, both Mount Arbel and Mount Nitai today were probably called in Roman time the Arbel region. As usual, I will end with a trivia question. Arbel was known in Roman times for manufacturing a particular product. What was that product? The answer will appear in five seconds.